Uh, let me invite Vít Dočkal, who is the lead for strategic project here at CIRC, who will moderate and uh, lead the discussion on how to best develop the AI ecosystem in Europe. And uh, Vít will introduce the speakers, the panelists for the panel. Vít, please. It's exciting to uh, have such a team people here. Thank you very much, Joško. I've got a headset. Uh, it's a lovely day today, yeah. Um, uh, let me welcome here on the stage Professor Holger Rose again. The chair of the Board of Directors of Claire and Humboldt professor at uh, RWTH Aachen. Yeah, Here. okay, please. Here. Oh, whatever you want to say, that's okay. <laughs> then, Patrick, can, can you please come again? Patrick, welcome again. Valeo, Vice President for AI. Then, let me please introduce Professor Jan Hajic, professor at Institute of Formal and Applied Linguistics at uh, Charles University in Prague. Welcome. <laughs> Tomasz Mikulov, the head of Foundational AI Group at CIRC CDU. <laughs> Hi again. And last but not least, Professor Michal Pichoček, the director of the AI Center at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering CDU. Welcome. <laughs> So, gentlemen, we have uh, several tricky questions for you. Uh, you know, the topic is how to best develop the AI ecosystem in Europe. So let, let me please start with the first one and imagine that we uh, are defining the development on the technology readiness uh, level scale. So can we please put the question there? So consider defining you can see also there, uh, the development of the AI ecosystem in Europe on the technology readiness level. What does it mean? Do we have basic principles adopted, or is it a proof of concept, or you know, pilot validation, or the system is completed already? So please, Michal, can we start here? Uh, thank you for the question, and uh, also thank you for uh, inviting me to the panel. It's a great honor. Uh, uh, I think that the question is very interesting, but my perspective is that it's very difficult to talk about where we are as a, as a Europe in this TRL scale, because I think I'm convinced that in each of the phases of technological readiness, Europe has results and a great piece of work to, to demonstrate. Uh, my only worry is that uh, it's just not enough in in volume and size and scale. So I think you, I would much rather, rather than commenting that there is one piece of TRL missing or underdeveloped, I would say that the amount of results is, and I would say it's, it's getting less competitive with the higher uh, level of the, of the TRL. I think that you, at the level of basic research, we have in Europe a substantially competitive uh, research results with America, China. But when it comes to AI, AI deployment, AI e economy as such, AI businesses, AI startups, uh, Europe is uh, lagging behind in comparison per capita, per GDP of the country. Okay, thank you very much, Tomasz. What is your opinion? You know, do we have the fully operational ecosystem of AI in Europe? Well, uh, can you hear me? Is it? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, obviously, I don't think that uh, we are doing uh, enough. I agree that uh, that. Uh, like uh, we are pretty much as Europe underdeveloped because uh, I don't actually know what is what is the TRL scale, but uh, uh, just comparing uh, the the history of uh, of the AI successes in Europe and uh, say in the US or in China, if you look at a very basic metric like uh, basically the money, who is making money out of AI because it's a technology as like cars or planes or whatever. Uh, well, we are not the ones who are making the money, right? Because it's uh, mostly the US companies uh, that have been investing very heavily into this. Uh, it was uh, with the state support as well. Then there's China that was uh, investing very heavily a lot of, like 10 years ago into AI. And there was this uh, deep learning revolution. I remember like uh, that's, uh, that's about 10 years ago. Uh, China did recognize it as a priority. They did invest uh, heavily into uh, capturing talent, uh, keeping, uh, keeping data, people in their ecosystem. And that uh, did allow uh, creation 
innovation or even scaling up of the of the companies like Alibaba and uh, Baidu and now we have TikTok uh, uh, from ByteDance uh, and so on. So I think that uh, they have been doing much better in like growing their ecosystem where actually US is the number one, China I would say is number two because of this. Uh, Europe, I don't know where I would even put Europe because basically it doesn't really matter on the on the AI map. We don't have the companies that would be of the, of the scale of these AI companies uh, in the US or in China like we are maybe like a hundred times smaller or something like this. It's basically insignificant. So I think that uh, just talking about the past, we were not uh, doing great. And uh, it's not because we don't have enough uh, people. There's like half a billion of people living in Europe. Uh, it's not that uh, we have that uh, terrible education compared to the others. We have like uh, plenty of uh, good uh, scientists, uh, that are coming out of the universities. I think that uh, there must be some more fundamental reasons why, why we are somehow unable uh, to create uh, this uh, big uh, tech sector in Europe. Because again, like uh, uh, US uh, does have it, uh, China was able to grow it, uh, but Europe only maybe is able to comment on it. But uh, somehow we, uh, we just uh, we just don't know what to what to do with it. So just uh, just talking about the past, I think that uh, this is enough. Maybe later in the discussion we can talk about the future, what we can change so that we actually identify what are the main points that we can be doing so that uh, the future would look uh, finally better and that we would also grow this uh, sector that is uh, terribly missing uh, at this moment in the, in the European economy. Thank you very much. Patrick, what do you think about the European AI ecosystem? Is it a well-functioning system? Actually, the way I understood the, the question, there are two ways. So are we ready? I mean... Are we talking about the readiness of the technology or of the ecosystem the itself? ecosystem itself, yeah. Just one word on the technology. I think we are all sharing. Yeah. I mean, the technology is quite transversal and, uh, and particular also because it's been f quite open. Uh, maybe surprisingly, AI is extremely open still. <laughs> and uh, that, that's good. And, they, they, and for some of the brand new technologies or out of the research labs that can be deployed almost immediately, which is also extremely striking. I think in terms of technology, when it comes to highly safety critical systems, that's, a, uh, that's another story. When it comes to the ecosystem, I think it's all has been said. I mean, we, we, Europe is lagging badly, uh, struggling, but uh, I mean, we are recovering. But uh, so we have, we have things missing, including the, 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 the strength of the investments uh, or the, the size of the, some of the tech companies, etc. But uh, I, I was... Uh, showing these examples of uh, brand new robot taxis at the beginning of my talk. So the examples, they were coming from the US. And, and I mentioned, not in the, it, was on the, it wasn't on the side, but I mentioned Baidu. So uh, China, obviously, these are the two main contenders. Um, there is no technical reason for not uh, being part of this, uh, of this uh, competition. But as a matter of fact, we are lagging. OK, thank you very much. Holker, you did very much for the European AI ecosystem. Are you satisfied? No, <laughs> I'm worried. I'm quite worried, right? I mean, uh, Tomasz said this quite nicely. Um, you know, I, I think the Commission can say all they want in terms of, you know, a very healthy ambition. And I'm, I, for one, am glad that they have this ambition. I do too. But the instruments that are currently being brought to the task are, are not going to succeed in, in getting anywhere close to that, uh, to realizing uh, that ambition, right? So we are currently, I would say, a distant third, probably, right? And if we take Britain out of the equation, they, they sort of taken themselves out of the European equation, sadly, a little bit, right? We hope, of course, that this will all change again. Then it's looking even worse, because let's be very honest, a lot of the, the Europe's top AI uh, expertise sits in Britain, right? And so we better get our act together. Um, I, I think in terms of basic research and talent, we're still doing quite well. But I believe even that is seriously threatened in areas such as large language models and generative AI, right? I do not see how on this continent we can succeed doing cutting edge research anywhere in industry or in academia, in fact, um, that is not going to become totally dependent on handouts and, and access, uh, maybe in exchange for data, maybe increasingly in exchange of substantial amounts of money uh, by those that, that have the capacity, namely these US-based companies, right? And I have nothing against the US-based companies. They're great, right? We should be working with them, but we should be working with them, you know, on par at eye level. And I think it's good for them too if we don't just produce the talent here in Europe, um, but also uh, have the capability to, to do 
the same kind of research, the same kind of cutting edge AI development that, that they do, not aimed at products, but, but aimed at you know, capabilities uh, out in public institutions. I think that's very, very important. And Europe could play a leading role in forming a coalition of the willing, a global coalition of the willing towards that end. We'll talk about how to improve the situation later, so I, I'll, I'll stop on this right now. But, but I will say this. If the Commission seriously believes, as it seems to, that doing regulation and having a nice ambition, a very clear-eyed uh, ambition, and then spreading some funding pretty thinly, mostly through uh, Digital Europe and Horizon Europe, and pull anything real in AI, I think they need to wake up quite seriously. That's not the way this works, right? We need an investment that's about 50 times as high as what's currently being invested. That will take a massive effort, not just by the union, but also by the member states. And we better get our act together, together with our Swiss and Norwegian and British friends, because they should be part of that too, right? In order to form a critical mass of AI research capabilities, and that will make sure that the American companies that currently hire many of our best and brightest will continue having access to that kind of talent. Because if we get to the point where we can't train that talent any longer, because we don't have the infrastructure to do the cutting edge research, right, they will suffer too. And nobody, nobody wants that, right? So strong AI in, in public institutions and strong AI in industry in Europe and elsewhere, that is the situation we should drive towards. Now, one last reflection for me. You speak of TRLs. One thing that's different in, between AI and I think many, many other technology areas is that the path from low TRLs to high TRLs can be extremely rapid. And I think politicians and, and uh, decision makers don't understand that. They don't understand that the way to be brilliant in AI is to do what DeepMind is doing too, which is to invest into, massively invest into low TRL research and then hope uh, and, and of course support that some of this bubbles up the chain and that bubbling up can happen extremely quickly as we've seen in the case of OpenAI. Thank you very much, Elgar. Uh, Professor Haich, you are very active in the European ecosystem with your team. How do you see it? So, good afternoon, everybody. So, it's very hard to say anything new after we have listened to uh, these four people here who know a lot about it. I, will, I, I also have to look at it uh, from my own subfield perspective, which is language technology. And that's, uh, that's something I understand. And uh, again, we have to distinguish between uh, what has been already said, between the, um, the uh, pre preparatory level of applications and the ecosystem itself. So a lot has been said that we have applications like, which are very well done, uh, which go fast from low TRLs to high, but what we don't have is the ecosystem. And from, from my point of view, from the language technology point of view, it's actually even worse. It's getting worse. Because I remember when we first get to European projects in 2006, there was a lot of support. There was a call every half a year almost uh, for language technology. Now there is one in four years in the, at best, right? So exactly at the time when language models and anything related to language gets gets attention, and, and rightly so. So I, just one example, I mean, we, I'm, uh, what, we are working on large language models in an EU project which we are coordinating, and we got six million euros to build large language models for all European languages. You, you, I mean, we, we will do our best, obviously, but without getting the hardware, uh, the, the legal stuff, the data which we are actually getting from the US, sorry, Europe, uh, we won't be able to do anything useful, I think. Right. I mean, again, we will do our best, but, but, but this is just a picture uh, how it works. And this was not a targeted call. We got into a data call with our own idea that it would be useful, you know, two years ago to actually build a large language model. Yeah, it's in many times in European calls, it's miracles for 10 million euros. Here, so, so Pete, if, I, if I might say one more thing, because, you know, this kind of thing, um, not you, but what you just said makes me really upset. Because, as you know very well, because you've helped us, we made the point to the European Commission um, four years ago that there are two areas that need special support, right? Not just them, but the other ones at least got a bit more support. And the two areas are of extreme importance for Europe, right? One is robotics, and it took them a while, but they got sort of their act together a little bit. And the other is language technology. So before all of this happens, long before Claire officially gave input, and others did too, right? To tell the Commission, this is important, this needs to happen. Had they acted on it now, the situation would not be quite as grim. And now they're acting on it with six million. I mean, this is, you are very polite about this. So let me be a little bit more 
outspoken about it. I think this is an insult. I honestly think it's an insult to this community, to your community, and it's an insult um, to all those who care about the success of AI in Europe, really. There must be people in the Commission that really, really need to sit down and do their homework, and then either not invest at all and say, we leave this to the Americans, fine, right? That would be very regrettable, but it is a choice or to actually make sure that the public money is spent reasonably. But, you know, I, I mean, I'm glad that you got the six million, but you said it yourself. That's not the order in which you need to invest in order to have any effect, right? So I hear your concerns. Um, maybe we go to another question. We have four questions, four main questions. We still have some 40 minutes, 36 minutes. Uh, so I see that we are not that optimistic regarding the ecosystem itself. So how to change it? You know, we need uh, multi-stakeholder collaboration, you know. So which of these stakeholders are driving force now? Which should be more active? You know, like academia, industry, public authorities, or can AI help us itself? I would start with Professor Haidt. Well, uh, I agree with, uh, with Holger that the, the commission is sort of, is, is trying to do something, right? I mean, they have some kind of vision, but, but the support is not here. Uh, national states, it depends. I know there is a lot of good stuff going on in Germany, in, uh, in language, at least, again, my, but also uh, otherwise. Uh, but here, you, we, have, we have heard that yesterday, nothing, essentially nothing, right? Um, industry, I don't know. But, uh, but again, uh, this is partly the, the last question. I, don't want, I do not want to alienate any possible investors, but whenever we talk about someone like seriously, you know, how can we make the technology that we are developing, which is often the best in the world because we have these competitions uh, on academia and so on, you know, what can we do with it? But, the, but maybe the money might be somewhere, I mean, even reasonable money, but, but the ecosystem, as, as, as we talked about last question, is not there. And I don't know whether the industry wants to push it or the investors should push it or whether governments, maybe, maybe I would rather not. Uh, or, I mean, we are trying to do our best, but of course academia doesn't have all the skills to actually push it all the way uh, to big success. Maybe some people, uh, not everybody. We need an ecosystem like in the Silicon Valley that will actually be able to do it. And, and, and uh, one thing which is missing is the legal support. I mean, we still, after all these big uh, changes in the copyright directive, and that's again in my field in language technology, we, we got something like Articles 3 and 4, but for industry they are useless and we are still behind uh, the US and, and Canada, Japan and, and Britain. So there is no way that uh, even with the new law we can cooperate with industry efficiently because we still have to think about it that they cannot take the data from us, they have to do it otherwise. And with the AI Act, it will get even worse, actually. So, uh, legal support, that should be done at the EU level. Uh, we should push uh, from academia, of course, uh, that we want to see our results uh, working. And then the rest, I don't know. Okay, thank you very much. Holger, your opinion. Yeah, I'm actually seeing a, a question coming in on Slido. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think this is highly related. So if I may, I, I will, I will okay. take this one. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, you, if, redundancy, if everyone yeah. can so, see so, it. So maybe if you can so, so read it. So the question I can read it. It says, do you think it is better for the EU to do invest subsidy as, or, to, or not to do and let the companies with minimal regulations and, and less affair do their thing, right? And, and I have a very clear and very strong opinion on that. I think if we do the latter, if we let the companies with minimal regulation less affair do their thing, we are all in for big trouble. I mean, even the companies themselves are calling for some sort of oversight, for some sort of reasonable guardrails. So I, I think this must happen. And, and with all the weaknesses that the AI Act has, and I agree with that, again, Claire gave a lot of input in this, and some of it was considered, and a lot of it, unfortunately, not, right? Um, I, I do think regulation is, is part of the solution here, but it is not the solution itself, right? And I personally think what's desperately needed is um, a big public investment. And, and the public investment should be done as it was in Canada, which did that very, very well, uh, into uh, basic research in AI. Um, and, and my suspicion is that, that if, and my hope is indeed, if, if this is done and, and done in the right way and swiftly and at the right scale, 
um, industry, especially the, SM, uh, the, the, the small medium enterprise based business that we have in many areas of Europe, right, will benefit tremendously from that. I mean, look at the Montreal ecosystem. It's one of the best AI ecosystems in the world, right? And why is that? It's not because the Canadian government said, let's have the companies do whatever they want and give them a lot of money to do it. No, it's because they created Mila. They created the Public Research Institute, right? And so I think we need to do something like this in Europe. We need to invest into AI that is done at public institutions for the public benefit by publicly funded researchers with full transparency and then give companies access to that. And yes, also work with the big companies that do their own thing behind closed doors. That's totally fine. We, we, it's not that we don't want them. We want to work with them at eye level. And in order to do that, a big public investment is absolutely needed. Now, public investment also has one big advantage, and that is it, it can create um, a stage upon which um, actually certain actors in Europe that otherwise might not be that competitive have a chance to increase their competitiveness. And I think that that would be a very, very good thing. Okay, thank you very much. What about stakeholders from industry? So, Patrick, your opinion. Can um, we put the question back there? The so, regarding the uh, stakeholders, maybe I can say uh, something about the strong one in Europe. I, I think the, the academia is, is, is just fun, really fantastic. I think we, we, we have nothing to be ashamed uh, about in Europe when it comes to the uh, public research and the academia. I mean, CERC is an excellent example here. I mean, in, in the UK, in Switzerland, in Germany, in, in France, I mean, we have extremely strong, um, uh, it's funny to say that, being with the, the industry. But I'm also from this world, but I think we have an extremely strong education system, a super strong public research system, despite the 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 the, the, the limitation of the of, in some countries at least of, of the funding. So I think we, we can even be proud of that. But it's it's very fragile. Uh, it can be it's clearly jeopardized by the uh, by 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 the companies who, who are extremely, which are very happy to, to get all these bright people, but that's, that's part of the game. So at least let, let's, let's make sure that we, we, we don't have only a grim vision. I think the, the European Academia in AI, in machine learning, in computer science at large is extremely strong. Um, uh, and if I can point a, a, a weak stakeholder in the, in the ecosystem, um, it has been mentioned already, but I think the, the, the the way we do investment, I'm not talking about the public investment here, there is a lot to say about it, but so the, like the, the, the venture capitalists, I think the, the, the ecosystem in Europe is, is way weaker. Uh, maybe I have also, having the French viewpoint is, probably makes me see it as even weaker. But I have this example, so for the people doing AI, I guess all, all of them, they know Hugging Faces, this startup, which is a very interesting company. I mean, so, People, everyone says, and it's because of the funding, that it's an American company. It's been essentially funded by three French guys. And the, the, the way it works with the, uh, the VCs and, the, uh, and, and, and all this investment is that uh, it's, it's very hard to, to, um, to, 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 to compete with the, uh, the, the, the investment ecosystem in the US and, and, and presumably the same in, the, in, the, in China. So I think we probably have to think about the, the way uh, VC work uh, in, in Europe. Thank you very much. Uh, um, so, Tomáš, do you think that academic people could do more than they are doing now? Well, of course, they can always do more, but <laughs> I would uh, maybe, uh, maybe try to answer the original question about like, what can we uh, all together, not just the academic people, but all together do so that uh, the AI ecosystem would be, would be better in Europe uh, in the future. I think that uh, it's, of course, like a difficult question, but uh, Mm, uh, it's certainly good to try to look uh, abroad who did succeed before us and uh, maybe try to copy some uh, some things or some decisions like uh, again I already mentioned Silicon Valley that has been successful that's that's obviously the number one and there's this uh, Chinese ecosystem which uh, of course like people are somewhat allergic to China whatever for political reasons but I think that they did pretty well at like uh, uh, protecting their own uh, own market uh, and uh, creating their own ecosystem that resulted now in these uh, big companies that I already mentioned uh, uh, before. I think it was uh, mentioned uh, by Holger this, uh, this keyword like critical mass, and I think that uh, that is a big part of the question. Like, uh, if we want to 
develop this uh, this AI ecosystem without just copying some superficial like uh, uh, patterns from from abroad and uh, uh, while trying to avoid building some Potemkin's villages that look like Silicon Valley but they don't really function. Uh, then I think that uh, the main thing, uh, number one for me, is the money. You need to create an AI ecosystem that uh, creates its own fuel, so that uh, kind of like chain reaction, you know, like uh, it has to grow uh, yeah, by itself. Uh, it cannot be just based on the on the public uh, money. Public money can be uh, can be used to create this critical mass in the beginning, so that the chain reaction starts, but then it has to sustain itself. And I think that uh, that's exactly what uh, what I've seen in Silicon Valley, like. Uh, once you have this critical mass of companies and people and capital all together, uh, then then it's great because uh, uh, you just have some cool idea, you discuss with people, and people know some other people, they connect you with some other guys, and then suddenly in a, in a year you have a functioning prototype of some of some uh, cool product, you can start selling it, and uh, it's all connected, it's great. Uh, here, here in Europe, I know that there are some cities that have been investing into this uh, startup, uh, startup uh, uh, like uh, areas uh, before like Paris and Berlin and London and so on. Uh, I'm just not exactly sure whether, whether this is enough because uh, it's still somewhat fragmented and if each country in, in Europe uh, develops this uh, uh, on its own, maybe it's, uh, uh, it's much harder than if you would uh, try to in, somehow, uh, in some way unite so that we would try to act together as Europe. It was what I mentioned before that uh, maybe Britain is not even part of EU now, which I think is, uh, is a big uh, miss as it, as it was already mentioned uh, uh, by Holger because that's uh, going against uh, this, this, uh, this goal that I'm saying uh, uh, it's fragmenting us uh, further. So if we want to reach uh, this critical mass so that uh, we would not create just some, uh, some groups that, uh, that uh, uh, just use the public funding and it's basically the science for science so that we publish papers and so on but, uh, but uh, it doesn't actually uh, like have any value in the end because the money doesn't come. So I think that we really need to create this critical mass that creates its own fuel so that uh, it grows uh, based on its own results and uh, again the keyword number one for me is the money. We need the money in AI and once, uh, once the AI starts generating money then, uh, then it's all great. Uh, if we are in a situation that we still need to put a, uh, put some external funding into it and trying to kind of like keep it alive externally I think that's the bad situation that we are kind of like uh, in in many areas uh, at the moment uh, so again let's try to copy what worked abroad and public funding is certainly part of it but creating private sector that uh, that can actually do things uh, on its own that should be our ultimate goal thank you very much Michal you were a successful boy in business and economic sector can you imagine what would be the price for just for such a center, you know? So it's, it's the worst to be the first entering and also it's the worst to be the last entering because all the smarts have been <laughs> sent already by my colleagues. Um, uh, you know, I'll try to say some, uh, some you know, I, I agree with Tomáš 100% that uh, it's a multi-stake venture kind of supporting AI. No matter whether we accept it or not, and you know, I agree with everybody who said that the European Commission, nation, national states, including Czech state, are heavily underinvesting AI, which is, on one hand, it's a lost opportunity, but on the other one, there is huge danger of being left behind and kind of become an AI-dependent country or AI-dependent region. That you know, we as AI leaders need to do our best to kind of lead the society so that this doesn't happen. I agree with everybody. However, AI is expensive. It's getting more expensive. Supporting AI is more expensive than 10 years ago. It's more expensive than five years ago because of the competition and because of all the other regions being able to pull much more money than Europe can. I think this is a big, big problem. Kind of replicating Canadian project at the time where they did that in the EU would have been much more doable than these days because of the cost and, cost and competition. Uh, if you look into the stakeholders who are supporting AI economy, AI research, AI technology in the United States, the, by far the biggest chunk of money is coming from venture capital. This is, this, is, this is the reason. The reason why U.S. is so ahead of time is not the fact that U.S. government and Department of Defense were funding startups like Google and Apple and others. They did. It was a kind of smart investment on behalf of the public, on behalf of the government, but that's not the reason. The reason is that there is a plentiful of venture capital. And the venture capital can kind of really follow 
follow the opportunities. It, it used to be gaming, it used to be crypto, now it's large language models. Kind of the venture capital is really supporting the trend in volumes and sizes and, and gravity that uh, the European Commission cannot and nation st states cannot. So there is this kind of massive economical disparity in the way how AI ecosystem can be supported between the US and, and the European countries that we just gonna need to be cognizant about. At the same time, you know, we are distant three. You know, I, I will always count uh, UK as a part of Europe because uh, Brits are Europeans and uh, as much as Norwegians are Europeans. So uh, European region, including Swiss, including Israelis, in my, in my perspective, we are distant three. Uh, can we be number one? Just cannot, right? Does it mean that we shall not uh, kind of continue fighting for quality and excellence and, and good work in AI? Definitely not. So what, what is the objective then? So my, my own personal objective is not to compete with the US. My objective is to kind of be a good citizen of a trans transatlantic European ecosystem which is going to be the number one on the planet, will provide the most of freedom and the most of uh, prosperity and wealth and, and support and research comparing to the other regions. I want to be part of this region. And each part of this transatlantic AI community can contribute differently and there are different ways how countries and cities and regions and institutes can collaborate. Uh, we as scientists demonstrated that in research, it's actually very easy because you know, we read best-in-class papers respecting if they come from China or from the United States or from Britain or from France or from the Czech Republic, we do. Uh, in terms of governmental support, it's more tricky because it cannot be easily sent between countries. But in terms of the venture capital, again, it's, it's easier. Your know, venture capital can, can flow between regions and is flowing between the regions. So I would say that European Commission and uh, nation states, beside funding, research, and building institutes like MILA, I agree with Tomasz, I agree with the 100%, they should also create the environment that is attractive to venture capital. The venture capital is coming here to Europe in big amounts and is the missing piece in the ecosystem that we just don't, don't have, I mean to have. Thank you very much. Actually, your answer goes very well with the next uh, question, with the third one. Shall we speak about the European ecosystem itself or is it a subsystem of the global AI effort where we just you know, promote our interests? So maybe if you would like to go on because, or, or you, do you think you said everything? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I guess kind of being the last and the first, I took the privilege of kind of answering both questions. <laughs> questions that yeah yeah uh, because it uh, yeah, goes yeah, very well yeah, with that yeah, yeah. you know, I'll, maybe i'll comment to what other speakers have to say on yeah this. okay so um who would like to react first maybe tomas you know you also spend quite a good time in the united states and abroad yeah, yeah. So, so should I be answering this question? This is on the panel, like uh, that. Uh, there's just nine percent of technological uh, technology companies uh, uh, have its uh, headquarters in EU, and uh, so why are we talking about uh, this European AI ecosystem? I think uh, precisely because of this, because uh, uh, like uh, we should have uh, much more of uh, of the presence of the technological companies uh, in Europe. And again, like I, I just keep repeating myself, but uh, it's about the money. Like uh, if we don't invest into very important uh, part of uh, basically economy uh, then we are gonna lose uh, lose the future and uh, uh, I think that it has uh, it has happened uh, many times in the past when there were like uh, some monopolies from from some uh, parts of the world either I don't know oil or steel or maybe airplanes where some companies were just uh, totally dominant and uh, it's never a good option to be locked in in a situation where we are dependent on uh, products uh, that are coming from uh, some foreign country, uh, I think it happened like uh, with uh, with the recent European war, like between uh, Russia and Ukraine, uh, that we did see very clearly that being dependent on so whatever uh, that's coming from abroad uh, is uh, is a security risk.
risk. Uh, uh, that's one uh, number one. The second thing, again, uh, we want to be uh, successful in the future. We want to be rich uh, and so on. And uh, we are just giving up on like uh, competing in this uh, in this uh, technological sector. It's kind of like uh, saying, okay, take our money and we are going to pay forever for operating systems and computers and search engines and social networks and uh, uh, now language models and emails and maps and you know it's a long list of services that we could be uh, like providing uh, for ourselves uh, that is based in part on uh, scientific discoveries that were made by Europeans in Europe uh, uh, and uh, the products are often like uh, in part implemented by Europeans that are working for Europe, uh, for American companies uh, but uh, it's totally unfair because we are just uh, just buying all this without any any like uh, bright future that we will have uh, this technology uh, created by ourselves uh, that we would uh, have companies that would have a headquarters in Europe that would be paying taxes in Europe that's also like a big part of the of the question and again it goes back to the money that I keep repeating mm. uh, if we want to be rich if we want to have the money in the future, Future, if we want to have the jobs, uh, uh, then really we need to uh, boost uh, this uh, this uh, big tech, uh, tech uh, big tech uh, sector. Because uh, even if you look uh, at the U.S. Uh, uh, stock market, uh, you can see that from the last 15 years, uh, uh, most of the growth has been actually uh, like uh, led by by, the, uh, by these uh, big tech companies like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Google, uh, Microsoft, uh, and so on. They did generate the wealth uh, in in, uh, in the U.S. Uh, I, and I, it's see, I see Holger would, would like to react, or you're raising your hand because yeah. you know I see that you know here is, in my opinion, you, you think that is one global environment for AI, you know. Uh, you see like a lot of ecosystems, let's say, that need to collaborate, coexist somehow. Holger, what is your opinion? Sorry, Patrick, you will receive yeah. Maybe if I can finish this, yep. like, uh, uh, of course you can just say that we are the world world and uh, it's all fine that uh, somebody gets richer and somebody gets poorer, but I don't think that uh, this actually is the future that we would like to be. We don't want to be a technological colony. We don't want to be poorer. We want to, again, have the jobs. We want to uh, have the money. I'm pretty sure of it, at least I do. Uh, and for that, we really need to have this technology here and we want uh, to have the people the investments the talent uh, and the bright future again like if we don't act now then we are risking that uh, we are gonna lose uh, the future okay thank you very much Holger so there isn't much I'd like to add to this just to re-emphasize a few points I mean Tomas you said this extremely well um, for me the key word here is is technological sovereignty right and I think that matters greatly I mean, of course we could say, for instance, electrical cars, you know, Tesla does this very well, uh, so do, you know, uh, other uh, manufacturers in the Far East, so why do we bother in Europe? Why, why should, you know, Volkswagen and Skoda and so on bother with electric vehicles? Let's just have others do that. And we don't even do that, right? And, and that's just cars. AI, as I explained earlier today, is going to touch and transform absolutely everything, right? So. If we miss the chance of having a major stake in that much more than 9%, and we'll get back to that in a second, it is exactly as Tomas said, we're then basically passing on the future. And we're saying, well, you know, others will, will benefit from this more than we do, and we're going to have to pay. And if we have disagreement with the others, we may no longer be able to pay, but we might be cut off altogether. And that's not a future that, that I want for our kids and grandkids, right? That's, that's not what we want. Secondly, um, I think AI is not a value-neutral technology, right? It's, it's often presented that way, but AI has values pretty deeply built in. And in reality, there's certainly currently not one AI ecosystem in the world, but there's at least two. There is what you call the global ecosystem, and then there's the Chinese ecosystem, which is pretty encapsulated and, and separate from the rest, right? Mm -hmm. And why is that? Well, first of all, because China wants to nourish its own capabilities, and I'm with you, Tomasz, actually good for them, right? That's, um, it's not clear that it needs to be done in that extreme way, but certainly they're successful in it, very successful, right? But also because Chinese values, without passing judgment at all, are just very different from Western values. And that's probably good and to be celebrated, but do we want all of AI to be built just on one set of values? Absolutely not, right? I mean, our Euro coins have national sites because, you know, we believe that diversity is good for us. So we want diversity in the AI ecosystem as well, and that means that Europe should play a strong role in it, right? Much stronger than 9%. And the last thing I would say is that, um, of course, you, you succeeded wonderfully in provoking us here with the 9%, right? 
I would say in terms of talent production as it currently is, we're doing way better than 9% in whatever you define as the global AI ecosystem. And it's that's also Forbes. something we should, we should protect, mm -hmm. right? And we should celebrate it, but we should also make sure that tomorrow and the day after and in five years, we still supply a good part of the world's AI talent. And yes, if then some of our talent wants to work in China or in the US, good for them, good for us. They bring our values into these systems. All great, right? But we need to have a tangible major stake in this. And as Tomasz said very nicely, that requires a massive investment. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Patrick, would you like to comment? Yes, uh, ju just um, tying up with what, what was just said, I think there are very, very strong reasons for struggling to get an actual EU ecosystem in AI. I think it's very important for sovereignty, for values, uh, for independency. I mean, we've seen that, unfortunately, recently with drugs and the uh, pandemics, with the energy and the war in Ukraine. So, we, we, I mean, we are facing headwinds which have revealed how dependent we are in Europe in terms so it's, it's very political here, right? So I think an AI is, I mean, we don't want Europe to be completely dependent on the on other part of the world for that. Uh, so to me, it's clear that uh, the EU has a role to play and to play the role for the EU citizens. But at the same time, there are two reasons for me to, to, uh, to, 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 to advocate for being part of a, a, a global uh, um, AI um, uh, ecosystem uh, on a different level. One is that it's a scientific discipline. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, it's pretty obvious uh, with the researchers in this room, including looking at where they have been, etc. I mean, the, the, this community is just global. It's international. And, and, and we, I mean, it's very important. We, we, it's, 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 it's research, right? So, so that's great. And this should, be, should remain global. And the second one is we have one big challenge, which is for everyone, which is the climate change. And I hope that AI is going to help rather than the opposite. And I really wish that it's not fragmented uh, ecosystems here for AI, because I think other, if so, it, it, it's going to be more harmful than, than not. Thank you very much. Uh, so, w I would like to add one thing again from my perspective of uh, someone working in uh, language technology, uh, that actually uh, just on top of the sovereignty and the other issues that were already discussed, we have actually one chance uh, to do even more. And that's because in Europe, one of the elements of diversity is the language diversity. and. We have to work within that system and for that system, meaning that if we want to be on par and keep the diversity, we have to have not one large language model, but 24, ideally 60, because there are also non unofficial but big languages in Europe. And this could be a, actually a precedent or even technological breakthroughs, like, like have one model for 50 languages and so on, uh, for other parts of the world or, or the global point of view, like India or... Uh, you know, many other parts of the world which, which have the same situation and if they want to go the same way, of course, uh, uh, as opposed to China, uh, then, then, then we could lead in, in, in this respect, right? So, but, but obviously, doing 60 language maths instead of one, it's a lot more money for, you know, all the ways from the hardware to the people who will work on it. Mm -hmm. So there are tasks that should be taken by the European ecosystem itself, because it's very specific in, uh, to Europe. Uh, but there are tasks like climate change, which is actually, you know, the interest of all of us in, on this planet. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, that actually is uh, moving me to the last question, because we have some nine minutes. Let me do you, if I may. Uh, because, oh, yeah, sure. Because Sorry. I promise that you, I'll just kind of give a comment brief after oh, yeah. uh, my fellow panelists will speak. Uh, again, I agree with your points, and you know, Europe should pay more, and you know, that's, this, is, this is our opportunity. At the same time, I am convinced that uh, there is the other important aspect, which is that we haven't talked about, and this is the mobility of workforce, because the AI successful countries are those countries who have open mentality to bringing uh, educated workforce from third countries. And arguably, in many regions in the European Union, this is not the case. Uh, this is a limited, limiting our success in kind of growing even better capability comparing to Canada, Britain, and United States. 
Okay, thank you very much for this follow-up comment. And uh, we have some s less than eight minutes according to display. So last question. Um, Yes, that's it. Um, do you see AI as a strategic resource that should be addressed by an international intergovernmental organization? And I remind you, remind you of a coal and steel in the very beginning of the European integration, and of course, you know, OPEC, you know, organizing the, the petroleum exporting countries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, what about the international organization for AI? And I would start with maybe Olger. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to be very brief. I think absolutely we need that. We need that because the member states, even the ones that are economically quite weighty, such as Germany and France, right, um, will not be able to, to do something at the scale where we can really make a global impact by themselves. So clearly this is a European project. It would be best to make it a European project in the geographical sense rather than in the EU sense. That means to have the UK on board, to have Switzerland and Norway on board as well. It would be wonderful to, to do it, uh, shall we say, CERN style. So, you know, CERN style in, 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 the, say, in, in the way that, that also other international players, including the US perhaps, um, invest themselves into that. I think that would be wonderful. But I do think that, that we need some European leadership in this and we need a big European stake in it. I also think because of the diversity issue that Jan mentioned or emphasized as well, uh, Europe would be um, in a great position to, to actually kick this off. Um, to believe that it can be kicked off just with sort of a nice ambition as the, the, the Commission currently does is like believing in cold fusion. I would like to believe in cold fusion as well, right? But, but we know the way to get nuclear fusion to, to go is massive investment and, and massive amounts of energy to get the thing started, right? And then hopefully it will become self-sustaining, as you guys have argued, and, and actually produce benefits. And I think compared to fusion, AI is actually a much better and a much safer investment in many ways. So I do not understand why it's so difficult um, to pull this together. Um, I honestly think for the member states um, and for the Commission, it should be easy to do that. And maybe what's needed is, is somebody from the outside, like Britain, for example, to say, you know what, guys, um, let's just do it. Let's, let's do it together. And if you don't do it, we're going to do a national one that, that's going to suck off the last of talent from your continent, right? Maybe it takes that kind of a threat mm. in order to pull people together to finally do the right thing and create something that does become um, a magnet for talent uh, an, an amplifier for expertise um, and ultimately a, a big producer for economic value for the European Union, um, its friends and far beyond. Thank you very much. And Michal, now you're second. So what about international organization for peaceful use of AI? Yeah, I will, I will respond and I first answer uh, to what Holger suggested. Um, recently, there have been formed a NATO innovation fund. Okay, out of NATO countries that wanted to invest in innovation for defense. Actually, U US didn't join because they've been kind of funding their defense innovation by themselves. It took the war in Ukraine to kind of get people together and to understand that they need to fund innovation in defense. I actually think that the kind of danger of losing or falling behind in AI is a similar threat. And it should be leading event and leading opportunity for the nation states to kind of get together and to kind of follow the example of the NATO Innovation Fund and to collect the resources for funding AI in similarly strategic way. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, overarching international organization, as I said, I believe in a transatlantic uh, US, uh, Europe, a collaboration. So definitely if there is a body that would kind of make sure that the wealth created and access is kind of equally distributed between uh, US and, and the EU, I think it will be a tremendous, tremendous success. But there is the third piece. When you talk about a global organization, and this is the oversight of AI that we haven't talked about, and there you are cognizant of the threats that kind of uncontrolled development of AI can pose to people, and there I, I really believe in transparency, and uh, if, if somebody would be establishing an organization similar to the organizations guarding the nuclear arms development, I would be all for it. 
not necessarily for control, but for maximizing the visibility of what is going on in AI development, not only in academia, because there we have the visibility, but also in the big companies. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So maybe the first assembly would be in Prague. Yeah? <laughs> uh, Tomáš. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about like what uh, what would this internal national organization uh, that would be overseeing uh, AI development, how it would uh, look like. And uh, uh, I actually think that uh, it will be created no matter what we think. Uh, on one hand, on the other hand, I think that, that there's uh, quite a few things uh, that can also like uh, go wrong because uh, uh, I think that world is uh, at the moment imbalanced again, as, as we were discussing before. Like uh, Europe uh, doesn't really have much money in AI at the moment, and so like uh, say public funding and so on. But we we are not really creating the values here. And uh, if we would create this AI organization at the moment, uh, that would be like worldwide. Like uh, uh, whose interests uh, would this organization follow? Well. Uh, well, probably not ours because we, we don't really play uh, like a significant role. So, so I'm not I'm not sure if it would be uh, such a great win uh, at the moment. Uh, at the same time, if it would be uh, like some some blue sky organization that would be just giving some some suggestions what should be done here and there. Uh, uh, in other words, if it would be powerless, uh, then uh, it would be also probably redundant because uh, again they are like pretty strong players uh, who are in, uh, who are seeing AI is basically this uh, this. Uh, uh, this uh, source of, uh, of wealth, a uh, source of money, and, uh, and uh, like why should they be limiting uh, uh, whatever they are doing? Uh, again, we can look at China, maybe they are not going to follow uh, whatever uh, ethics regulations we, we, uh, uh, we come up with uh, in Europe. So why should they be part of this international organization if they are just going to, either there will be uh, no power to enforce uh, uh, whatever recommendations this organization gives, or if there will be the power, uh, then then uh, some players may not want to be part of it. Some players may actually abuse the rules and just maybe take over. Uh, so maybe I'm a bit paranoid, but uh, <laughs> I think that uh, such organization will pro probably be created. Uh, but I'm a little bit worried already now about it. <laughs> OK, so maybe not the overarching, overarching international organization, but maybe for climate change. Professor Haidt? <laughs> well, I, have, I have 25 seconds. So my answer is yes, but, but maybe we should have two. One, that it will be worldwide, or at least transatlantic, where we will coordinate, and then one in Europe, mainly with industry, that will lobby. And we know about successful organizations like that, like BDVA, and at least you know, half successful, I would say, and I think that's one way to actually make the EU improve the ecosystem. It's, it's money first, but there is also many other things, as I said before, legal environment, which is both encouraging and, you know, regulating in the, in the good way, and providing other things like uh, cross-border cooperation without, you know, everybody knows about AI A1 form. I mean, I mean this is something which uh, which is not even worse than Brexit, I would say. So, you know, things that that limit cooperation, not only in AI, but in general. Uh, and, and there should be a very strong lobbying organization to do that. Great. So we have one international world organization for AI, for common interests like climate change. And we have one specific for Europe, and there would be one specific for the United States, maybe. Uh, Patrick, some last comment? I don't, I don't know if we need one organization, but we need definitely a coordination at the EU level, that's for sure. And I think ELIS is, is a good example, at least for research. Uh, we should have something similar for infrastructure. So there are efforts here in the Czech Republic with the, the, the supercomputers of Carolina, Carolina, I think the name. We have similar things in France and, and pr presumably in other countries. If we can coordinate with infrastructure, that would be nice. Uh, or even better. Uh, for the rest, um, I'm always a bit uh, uh, cautious with new layers of, of, of organizations. But co coordination and, and joint efforts in Europe, that, that's for sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen, for this very nice discussion. We have a lot of questions we can't cover within this time, and very happy to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.